Hi there, this week's guest on the Chattering Hour is actor, singer and dancer Lawrence Cow. You've seen him on TV series such as Sleepy Hollow, The Purge, The Walking Dead and most recently on Netflix's Woo Assassins. Up next on the Chattering Hour, Lawrence Cow. <laughs> After graduating with a BA in theatre arts, Lawrence was part of Carver Modern Dance Troupe, which was so successful on MTV's America's Best Dance Crew. On stage, he's worked with award-winning theatre companies such as the Guthrie Theatre and East West Players. On TV, he's worked on such shows as NCIS, Law and Order, Special Victims Unit, and the hit independent sci-fi circle. Most recently he worked on the Netflix Wu Assassin's Fistful of Vengeance film. Lawrence, thank you very much indeed for joining me today. Yeah, no problem. Thank you for having me. So I wanted to start at the very beginning as I always do and talk about your childhood. Uh, Whereabouts did you grow up? Uh, I grew up in Hacienda Heights. It's sort of east from LA about... um, yeah, maybe about 50 minutes east. Right. And what sort of childhood did you have? Um, it was a good childhood. Um, I had Asian parents, so I was forced to play uh, musical instruments. Uh, they definitely had a, a specific path for me to, um, to go towards. But right. um, I, I think because my mother was so into the arts and uh it forced me to play the piano and and um just different instruments i think it just like you know um fostered my curiosity towards um performance right and um yeah so you know my childhood was uh it, it was a simple one okay. yeah and, so did you what, what were you watching many films at that time you know what? Um, actually, not so much. We didn't really have cable either. So, you know, a lot of kids watched cartoons and um, I didn't really watch that many cartoons. I think I watched a lot of black and white TV shows like um, like I Love Lucy or um, Beverly Hillbillies or... <laughs> or, like, or, like, or like Gilligan's Island, but... Right. Um, you know, but my mom and I, we did actually watch a lot of, uh, we did watch a lot of films growing up. Um, like every Friday we'd go to Blockbuster and we'd rent a movie and then, um, yeah. What sort of genre films were you watching? Um, you know, all kinds of films. Um, I was really into watching horror films um, growing up. Um, it, but you know what? I'm so terrible at remembering films. Like, right. There's some films that I've seen before, and then I'm like, "Oh, I've never watched it before." And then I, and then I put it in, and I'm like, "Wait a minute!" Like maybe three quarters of the way, and I'm like, "Man, I, I watched this movie before." But yeah, you know, growing up with my mom, though, I feel like we watched a lot of um. Man, I don't even remember titles, but like we would watch like like she she like like musicals, right? Um, like Fiddler on the Roof, and um. And you know, all these movies, like if you ask me, like, oh, oh, so what do you remember about the movie? I, I absolutely do not remember anything. <laughs> it's terrible. It's terrible. I'm, I'm the worst film um, rememberer. Right, right, right. Okay. <laughs> I'll, I'll share with you. My, I saw Fiddler on the Roof when it first came out in the cinema. All I just remember is just crying at the end. I yeah. just being so upset. My mother saying, it's not real, Nick. I'm going, yes, it is. This is, this is so real to me. <laughs> what about, what, you said your mom was very much into the arts. Did, do you uh, remember you went to the theatre much as a kid? Um, no, I did not. Not at all. Um, 
I mean, and I went to the movie theater, but but never anything, n- never anything live. I think I I, I didn't really go wa- to to any live shows until maybe I'd say college or after college, or oh or even like or like doing live theater until uh, until I was in high school. Right, right. So what sort of, is is that where the acting bug kind of bit you? Was that at high school then? Yeah, yeah. High school is when it really began. Um, there. There was a drama program that I wasn't really a part of, because um, you had to t- you had to take courses. Uh, but but they offered students to just come and participate in shows if you wanted to audition for anything after school. And so my buddy was like, "Yeah, you know, I f- I feel like you would really like this." And it started off with just a bunch of improv, and then you know I had I had so much fun being on stage, and and then um. You know, there, there, there were plays that were being auditioned at school and I thought, you know, like I might as well go and try. And then I realized, hey, I'm actually like, like getting something, something out of this, like the reciprocation that I get from, from the audience. And then, um, and just the uh, catharsis and the release that you get when you're on stage was just something I've, I've never really experienced before. I mean, you can experience it when you're playing the piano, you mm-hmm. know, you feel it within your body. Uh, the kinesthetic energy of playing an in, a musical instrument. Um, and then I just never really thought about that in story and being on stage and being able to express this story and have like um, feedback from audience members was, was uh, you know, something really interesting for me. And, you know, I would, I would say that I'm a pretty shy person, but, um, you know, being on, on stage and being able to let it out was just marvelous. Yeah. Do you do you have a favorite part that you played when you're on stage at, at college? Um, or high school? Well, in high school, um, I I was in uh, I played Lysander in a Midsummer Night's Dream. Right. And that yeah, that was that was fun. We had like an outdoor um, uh, an outdoor stage, and then um, yeah, it was it was great. It was. Um, it, you know, I, 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 I was in an interesting time at that moment where like I was, I was just trying to discover myself and figure out things that I liked. And um, I think on that stage was when I, when, when I decided to myself, man, I, I, I really want to do this for a living. And then I sort of decided in that moment that I was going to change my major in college and then just begin um, studying drama and theater. Right. Do, what was your favorite class? Or what was it? Shakespeare or modern theater or speech or movement or what was what was the one thing or if there was one that you just thought oh, this is the one I really look forward to doing every time um you're talking about in theater yeah in theater uh-huh. was there a particular skill or uh like a pat- particular skill mm. while doing theater mm. um you know, I feel like I'm a pretty kinesthetic actor. So anything that involved movement and and, and moving around on stage, I, I always really uh, enjoyed. So anything that required more physical prowess was something that um, I think I could uh, latch onto. Right, right. Yeah. So is that kind of how you got into dance? Yeah, um, I, I went to college and I was just trying to figure out other things to do, um, you know, clubs to join or, you know, things to um, to do on my spare time. And then, and then, you know, when, in Orange County, there are just a bunch of these hip hop uh, dance troops all over, and I had no idea. And and so, I, you know, it just sparked my interest. And then I just I just tried to get on a team, and then I fell in love with dance, and I, you know, I fell in love with, um, you know. I just just moving to music in in such intricate ways, and um, that sort of took me away a little bit um, from th- from theater and from acting uh, during college. You know, I was still able to do some main stage shows, but then I, I became so like laser focused into uh, choreography and then um, um, obsessed with watching groups doing things so synchronized. I thought it was um, just amazing. Yeah. Right, because this is, how, so basically this is how and why you 
joined Kaaba Modern Dance Team. Is that right? Yeah, yeah. So I was on, I was on that team for a good three a, a good four years, and then um, after my last year, um, MTV decided to do this um, hip hop dance show called America's Best Dance Crew, and then um, we were uh, lucky enough and skilled enough to 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 get on the show, and then I feel like that propelled, um, I guess, like hip hop choreography teams um, onto the main stage, onto like, um, you know, on, onto television. Cause I feel like people have never really seen stuff like that before. So it was cool to be like part of the beginning movement or pioneer of, um, you know, of what that was. Cause I was looking at clips earlier on today and you did a wide range of different, you know, you were given a lot of different tasks do you remember a particular task that you were given or a particular week of the show that you really enjoyed or found challenging or sticks out in your memory? Let's see. Man, that was such a long time ago. <laughs> I'm sorry. Yeah, no, 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 no worries. You know what, maybe, you know what? I think it's, uh, it is maybe, maybe our first performance because we really had no idea how, you know, greater America would, um, or the world would, would view our dance and how people would, re would respond. But there was a dance where like we pretended to hold shotguns and we're like shooting the audience. And, uh, and you know, it just blew people away. And, I, and, I, and, and in that moment, it was like, man, this is, this is cool. Like people are actually reacting like very positively towards like the things we were doing. Right. You know, we go, we go in, the, we go on the show and we're like, yeah, you know, we're, you know, every time, every time you do something new and people that, you know, that people haven't seen before, it's just, you know, it's a little nerve wracking. And, and just to, I guess, um, to see all the feedback, the positive feedback, it was, sure. um, it was cool. Sure. Yeah. It sort of propelled us um, into, um, you know, throughout the throughout the, the season yeah because you yeah yeah because you did very very well and I, I was as i was watching some of them earlier on i really like the michael jackson thriller oh yeah <laughs> <laughs> take yeah that was fun that was a lot of fun like just doing all the intricate movements i mean um yeah big ups to my homies they're still my friends like tony tran and mike song they're geniuses at at, at creating um like um, like this isolation choreography is what they're known for. And so, yeah, they're still doing it and it's amazing. Are you, are you still working with them at all? Um, not necessarily. Um, we have a bigger group now. We're called the Kinjas. Right. And so it's just um, about 30 guys that uh, get together and, um, you know, if there, if there are gigs available, then it's sort of like, hey, you want to do this? Uh, you want to do this? Like the, 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 there's something happening here. Like you guys want to get together? And then um, we form like another small subset of another group and then we go in and perform and stuff. But yeah, I haven't really um, done anything much recently. Right, right. What was your first professional acting job? My first professional acting job was a co-star on uh franklin and bash all right i was um i played i played a student that was uh it was it like a mock trial kind of thing i don't even remember but i know i represented i represented like netherlands in, in <laughs> i think i only had i only had like one line but it was so it was so amazing you know your first you know your first thing that you ever do on on TV and then there's just so so many moving parts you're just like you're so confused you know I get you know I'm so nervous I'm like what is going on but I, I remember um um Chris calling me um 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 and he was just like man uh you you booked this you booked this co-star I was like you know I was over the moon and it's crazy to think that you know the small things um the small wins in the beginning of your career can be just so so important Right, you right. Know? And you know, now we just desire such bigger things, and you know, so it, it's nice to think about those first, those first moments. Right, right, right. Did you get to act with Malcolm McDowell in that episode? Uh, no, I did not. That would be a treat. <laughs> <laughs> 
<laughs> yeah, he's he's extraordinary. So I'm mean, one of the other things you went on to do after that was The Walking Dead. What, yeah. Uh, this was what, three episodes, two, three episodes. Uh, yeah, it was it was three episodes, um, and that was that was just amazing, man. Just the experience of 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 being on a set um, with with all the special effects and you know the zombies running around you don't necessarily even have to to act anymore because they sort of like do it for you by creating this environment but you know what's funny about the walking dead is i always look back on that and i'm like man i was just definitely a glorified extra walking around with a gun you know i mean it blew my mind for sure <laughs> and it, but at the same time it's like man i didn't you know, I didn't even really do anything. I just walked around, I said a few lines, and then I just got killed and murdered. But definitely grateful for that experience. It was the first time I, I worked, um, you know, outside of Los Angeles. It was in, it was in Atlanta. And um, I feel like that really helped boost my resume and, you know, allowed me to to go into more rooms and, and find more jobs. Right, right. Do you, I, I was reading that you had removed Dancer from your resume at some, at one stage, because people were looking at you just seeing the dancer bit rather than an actor. When did you yeah. become aware of that kind of thing? I think, you know, it, it, it sort of happened. I guess there was just like an audition where I went in and then, and then they're just looking at the resume and they're like, oh my gosh, uh, Cobb Modern, MTV's America's Best Dance Crew. And they were like, can you dance? They asked me to, to, to dance in the room. And I'm like, man, this is just so not what I came here to do. And then I, I just didn't want people to be distracted by that. Right. You know, but over the years, now I've sort of been able to marry both of them of them together because at one point I was like man I'm going to shun this away from who I am I want to act I, I just removed it a little bit and then I sort of you know I, I you know in in acting you should bring everything in and so now I am trying to embrace all the things right right have you ever done a a, a musical ever done a full scale proper musical I, I have. Um, it was my first uh, stage show in Los Angeles. Um, it was called Crunk Fu Battle Battle. It was this. It was a hip hop musical. I played the lead, and there was a lot of dancing, and I had to sing. And I'm not a singer, so that that freaked me out a lot. But um, the theater company set up uh, uh, vocal lessons for me, and so I, you know, I, I felt a little bit more comfortable, you know, once once the the play began. Right, right. But, yeah. Do you um, do you still train regularly for dancing? Um, no, not 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 really anymore. I feel like dancing nowadays is when I when I listen to something and I feel inclined. Or if my mood inspires me to to dance, then I will. Right. And um, yeah, so it's not it's not something that I I have been doing re religiously. Right, right, right. You mentioned choreo uh, choreo choreography earlier on. Is that something that you really enjoyed doing, putting stuff, working as a choreographer rather than a, as a dancer? I was just curious. If, um, yeah, I was I was very interested in that, but that was more that was more mainly that was more during uh, my college years when I was on this dance troupe when when I was right. on Cobb Modern and then and then just um, creating with friends and having a bunch of people do, doing your choreography and after that I started teaching too here and there and I enjoyed it um, um, but uh, yeah it's not something that I have been doing recently. Right, yeah. right, right. Okay, well, let, let's get back to Walking Dead. I mm -hmm. presume you were aware, you said you know, it was exciting when you were on the set. Were you aware of the show before you went on to it? Because it's on season three, uh, season four? Yeah, I, uh, 
I did not watch the show, but I understood the craze. And and when I told my roommate, I'm like, man, so yeah, I'm gonna be doing like three episodes on The Walking Dead. And they're like, what? Are you kidding me? And so like he sat me down and we watched the first season. And then I and then I was like, oh man, this is crazy. And so yeah, yeah. So it was it was a trip. Right, right. <laughs> I mean, I mean, it's incredibly, obviously to say, it's an incredibly popular show. Do people still recognize you from that? Um, um, last time I got recognized was, was when I went to Thailand. And it was um, before I entered the country. And they're, they're like, yeah, I know you from somewhere. And I thought it would be sp- from something else because, you know, I'm not, in Walking Dead, I'm literally just walking around. <laughs> walking dead and then i got yeah. then and so he was like yeah walking dead i'm like yes yes i mean i'm i'm the other asian guy that um the evil glenn right 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 another show you went on to do another supernatural show as it turned out is uh, sleepy hollow what do you yep. remember doing sleepy hollow um, it was great. Um, I, I wasn't I wasn't on that set for so long. It was just like a, it was a one day thing. Um, I remember. I believe there was a page. Um, before the scene started that I did not see. So when they called action, I had like a newspaper up and then. I was supposed to say some lines, but then I didn't realize that um, I had these lines. And so, and so I had to quickly just like, okay, uh, what the fuck is going on? And then, you know, figured it out. And then it just kept going. But yeah, there, there was a moment where it was just like, oh shit, there's like, a, there's a few lines that I still need to say, you know, like that moment when you, when, when you feel like you're prepared and then you're just on set, you're like, wait a minute. Yeah, but it, but it was fine. It was fine. But that's all I remember from it. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> I had a similar, I had a similar experience a couple of years ago on a feature film, and I thought, great, I've got this done. I, I've, I've found all, you know, I've learned all my lines. It's great. And then end of the day, I said, right, Nick, we're about to do your last scene. I'm thinking, I've done my last scene. You've already. I, I, <laughs> it's like, it was half a page. It was fine. <laughs> it was like, and of course, I just not scrolled far enough on the PDF. Yeah. And it, you know. All my scenes were at the beginning of the movie. It was just a little recap at the end of the movie, and I had no idea what I was supposed to be. I was literally going, "Oh yeah, just give me five minutes. I just need to <laughs> just give me five. Were you able to do it? You were, you were okay? Yeah, 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 yeah. It, I think it got. It was. It, I say it was half a page. I think I only had about two or three lines in it, um, but it was just that. Yeah, <laughs> it's just that moment you think. Well, Even if it's all about, you know, it freaks you out a little bit. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, yeah, no, it was absolutely fine. Now, another thing, that, uh, um, another film, the indie film, indie film that you did was Circle. How did you get into, which is, I've seen trailers of it, can't watch it over here, but it seems a fascinating film. How did you get into Circle? Um, yeah, that was an interesting film. Um, I, I, you know, a typical audition, audition for it, and then, um, and then, yeah. We, 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 uh, we had like this huge table read. It's just crazy because there's so many people and um, all in one room. And um, we shot, I think, in a black box studio in Chinatown, I believe. I don't quite remember. But, you know, it's, it, it, it's such a cool experience because you're with so many actors in one room. And everyone's you know trying to to give their all so it's just cool to gauge how people act and interact ah. with each other you know with, with with such a big amount with with so many actors together in one room because usually you're just doing one you're doing a scene usually on on, on a show or, or at most you'll have like you know five people a bunch of extras but here you know you're just so connected with every single person and and I thought that was, I thought that was really fascinating. Right, right, right. 
Um, you then went on to do, I think, in fact, in the same year, you had a major uh, arc on the originals uh, TV series. How was that experience? That was fun. It was cool to play someone that, um, you know, that had supernatural powers <laughs> and uh, to play a witch. Right. Uh, and um, it was cool to just, I think what I got out of that experience was just being able to go back to Atlanta and to work there for a long period of time. And then just to, it, it was sort of like a reflection of, of my journey as an actor and looking back on like when I first came to Atlanta and even like seeing how the city had developed over the years and then just sort of comparing it to sort of my, my, uh, my journey as an actor as well. And um, I, yeah, it was, it was fun. The arc was cool. I wish I had, um, I wish I had a lot more, uh, more episodes, but you know, it is what it is. Yeah. And um, you always know when you're about to die, when the episode is just filled with more of your character, <laughs> you're like, Oh wow, this is a great episode. Like they're writing me in more and like, Oh, it's cause they're going to kill me. <laughs> <laughs> it's interesting you, you made a comment there about it, it reminded you of your arc as an actor what did you kind of mean by that um i i think just just looking back um you know sometimes it's nice to just to pause and look back at, at you know our journey as artists and just to see like how far we've come even though sometimes you're like man there's still so much ahead but I think at that moment for that gig, gig, it, it really helped me, um, you know, ground myself and just tell myself, hey, you know, you're doing okay. You know, there's going to be more, there's going to be more jobs, you know, because every time, every time you know, in this business, you just feel like this is going to be the last thing that I'll, that I'll ever do. And, you know, usually things come yeah. and they come and go. So it's just yeah, flowing with what that is. Yeah, yeah. yeah. No, I mean, by this stage, you've obviously done, you've done TV, you've done some film, uh, you've done quite a bit of theatre. Do you have a preference for film, TV or theatre? Hmm. Man, they're just so, they're so different. TV is fun. When you are, when you are like, I mean, it's fun. It's fun when you're guesting too, but it is fun when you're a series regular, you know? You understand the moving pieces of of uh, the whole engine. You know the the collaborative confidence is more um, enveloped in your body when you're working, and uh, you, you just feel more free. <clears throat> um, but that's I, I feel like that only happens when like you're like a when you're a regular or like you're mm -hmm. like a heavy recurring. Um, that in compared to to doing films though. I, I just feel like films, maybe films are more fun for me because I feel like the the collaborative, um, um, the, the collaboration that you get with the director. And then it's sort of like, it's sort of like you're making the, you're making this piece of art together. Whereas when you're on TV, it feels like, oh, this is what it is. Uh, it's going to be like this. You just got to follow the rules, but in film, you sort of get the the leeway to explore different ideas, and I I, I think that over TV, but theater is an entirely different thing, you know, like because theater you just get like the instant you get an instant response. And if you learn something on stage in that moment, you can feel the audience member learning it with you at the same time. Do you know what I mean? Let's say, let's say you discover something while you're acting on stage and it's like, oh fuck, I just got like an epiphany about my character. And then, and then it just comes out in that moment. And then, and then, and you see like an audience member feel it at the same time. That's some powerful shit, you know? Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, I find I find that fascinating. I know exactly what you mean because it's nothing like life. But because every show is different, every night is obviously the same. But yeah. 
to keep it alive, it has to be spontaneous in some form. And things are always going to change slightly for whatever reason. Totally. And I, I, I also find that therefore, obviously you have an awful lot more rehearsal. How much rehearsal do you normally get with theatre shows over there? Um, with theatre shows, you get a good amount. Like they, they really sit you down and then um, you go through the ringer like, the, you know, like maybe maybe a month beforehand and you're going like eight, eight, eight hour days. Right. Just going through it. And um, it, you, the process is just so much more, so much more involved. I feel like there's just so much more artistic sensibility put into doing theater than uh, anything else. Right. Cause you, when, you're, when you're on set, you can, you can fuck up. You can just not remember your lines. Someone can like be like, "Yeah, it's it's supposed to be like this." Yeah, we'll just do it again. You know, in, in theater, you just you 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 cannot do that. You cannot. <laughs> and that's the that's 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 the fun part about it, though. Yeah. yeah. Have, have you ever dried on stage? Um, there was one time where I said a sentence, a statement that would change the whole that it was a statement that would change the whole play right and i realized i said it wrong <laughs> and then and then i followed up i followed up that line with just kidding <laughs> so i said a line and then i i looked at my my the the actress playing my sister and i was like just kidding and then she's like looking at me like, oh my gosh, what are you doing? And uh, and then I said the correct line and then we just kept going. But it was just, you know, I had to ask what I said earlier. So I didn't know what to do. I uh, think that's genius. I, yeah. I have to... <laughs> that is genius. I, I like, yeah, well done you. <laughs> No, I mean, one of the other shows um, that you went to, I have to say, well, I, I do want to talk about were Assassins, but just before we do that, there's another show uh, that came around about the same time. It's a show I find incredibly difficult to watch because uh, I find the whole concept so dis distressing, and that's The Purge. Mm. You played Andy Tran on The Purge, and it, I felt quite different to some of the other stuff to some of your other work uh, that I've seen. How did you get The Purge and how did you find that experience? Um, the Purge, uh, it was a, hey, Hamilton, my dog, sorry, he's digging. That's okay, I've got <laughs> one. I'm, I'm, I'm expecting him to be interrupted fairly soon, yeah. <laughs> um, he, uh, you know, typical audition, I went in for it. Um, um, I think, I think I, I don't think they were trying to, I don't think they were looking for me actually. They didn't think that I would be able to play this kind of a character. I think Chris was like, hey, you know, I think Gail Pillsbury was casting director and then he just really pitched me. He's like, look, he can do this. Just have him like come in and then see what he can do. And um, I feel like I did a good job in the audition. And then um, yeah, I got cast and uh, this part was, uh, it was interesting, you know? Yeah, just to, to dive into a character that uh, so about the uh, the 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 principles of um, this world, um, but it but in the end, like getting murdered by someone who um, who you know who who sort of thinks on the same wavelength as, as him, you know. So it was just uh, it was interesting. It, it was very and and many congratulations on the performance because I you know the moment where you're realize how things are going to go i think the both of you because it you know it's your actors working together i, I get that were you familiar with the purge had you seen the film before are you familiar with yeah. the tv series yeah. i've seen the i've seen the first movie yeah and you know it's interesting too because um you know it's like uh it's like social commentary too at the same time through uh, um um you know on, on what we were going through, you know, as a country, you know, people mm. having different beliefs. And, and so that was, that was interesting to explore too. Right. Right. The, uh, I mean, as the, then your really big break 
came, I guess, with Wu Assassins. Uh, again, a fascinating uh, portrayal. What was the experience, and you have kind of mentioned earlier on about being more involved in the TV, what was that experience like on Wu Assassins? Um, it was, I think this was, this, this series was probably the moment where I sort of found my freedom as an actor. I feel like before on other sets, it, you know, I've always been more polite about, um, about, you know, you know, my performance and just, you know, talk, not taking as many risks um, as I feel like I want to. And I feel like Wu Assassins was when I told myself, fuck it, just go in, you know, this character, um, you know, just getting rid of my like imposter syndrome and just going in and um, doing my work. You know, I love acting so much and it's just like, man, you got hired for this job, just fucking go kill it. And so I think that's when I, I feel like that's something that I realized. And, and also it was just, it was just such a fun experience. Like uh, everyone just felt like family. Um, yeah, all, all the other regulars were great and we just had a blast, man. And then, and then, um, you know, I, I used to watch the lead actor Eco Weiss in, um, in the raid a, a long time ago. And I was like, and you just never thought in a million years I'd be on a series with this guy who's like an amazing, he's an amazing martial artist. He is a, he's a genius. So just to see him work and to see him come up with choreography on the spot and, and just seeing all the, the, the stunts that were involved, it was just, it was cool. Right, right. Do you have a piece of advice that you give to other actors who find themselves in that position, who they've got this big break and that moment of going onto a TV series, how you approach that big break moment? I guess I'd say just to really embrace the moment and just to not to not feel like you're not a part of it, you know, not a, not a part of the show. Like once once you're once you're on the show, like you're on the show, like mm. you know, you you are the character. Yeah. And so so anything you say on set, anything you do, it's not wrong because like you know they casted you, so just go do your work, right. you know. Right. But at the same time, you know, I feel like you know don't don't don't. Like re remember, remember your your training. I feel like sometimes when you get onto a show and then you're just so busy trying to remember lines, you sort of forget. Like, uh, I guess the the art behind um, what 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 you're, what you're trying to do in the first place. You know, sometimes that can be lost, and so just remember, just to constantly pull yourself back and be like, oh, you know, what is this? About? Why, why am I doing this? And it's just like it's for the story. You know, I think it's the biggest takeaway. Right, 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 right. What do you enjoy most about acting? I think I think it's just to remind people of uh, of their humanity. You know, I think once you can let people, once you can help people feel like, oh man, I, I felt like that before, or 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 to have or to play a character that people don't normally see in a positive light in their everyday lives and to and, and to play that character and, and for someone to watch him and be like, oh man, you know what? I actually empathize with somebody like that. And I think just changing people's perspectives and um, creating different positive narratives in other people's minds is what I think is, is what I like most about acting. And also just, and also helping people tell their stories. Um, you know, I, I, it's like helping people tell their stories with a splash of like, with a splash of, you know, who you are and what, what you've lived through and being able to collaborate um, and, and, and do that. That's a beautiful answer. That's a really beautiful answer. What do you think, now you've done the TV series of Rural Assassins and then Netflix decided to, rather than do another series that is decided to do the feature film of uh, Fist, uh, War Assassin's Fistful of Vengeance. What was your reaction when you first learned that was what it was going to be? Um, I thought that was a great idea because I feel like um, 
Wu Assassins as a series was something I believe people didn't watch all the way through. It was, it was like, man, there's so many ideas. There's too many things happening. I feel like people probably watched like three or four episodes and then they stopped. I feel like the format of a movie and potential franchise is a better route. Plus, if I'm, you know, if they did another series, I wouldn't be able to really audition for anything else. <laughs> so I love the idea of, a, of the movie. Plus, um, this movie is really going to be, it's going to be really good. Yeah. I have, yeah, it, it's going to be great. The action, it's, it's a, it's a fucking action movie. It's, they, they take, they just sort of compact, compact a lot of things into this one movie. The premise is just more simple and it's easier to latch onto. And I feel like it'll be, it'll be a really good ride right. for people watching it. So are you filmed in Thailand? Uh, what was that this year? Or we got there in January and then I got back um, the beginning of April. Right. So I was there for a good three months. Had you been there before? I have not. And so I had the most fascinating time. And <laughs> shooting out there is incredible because um, everything is on location. We didn't really shoot anything. On, we didn't really shoot on sets that were built. So everything was just beautiful backdrops of Thailand. And so just, just, you know, taking in that energy and, you know, being somewhere else, it's uh, it's a, uh, yeah, it's cool. It's powerful stuff. And it's just so much fun. The food there is amazing. Everyone is just so respectful in Thailand. And um, it was just a, it was a nice work vacation. Right. right, right. <laughs> so do you have um, anything else that you've been working on recently? Uh, yeah, I just, I just shot a indie film called The Longest Sleep. Um, we shot this. It was crazy that they were able to pull this off. Um, my hat is off to the producers. Like this, you know, this is during COVID. There are so many like protocols and it's an indie film. And we shot this in 20 days and um, it, it, it was fun. It was a really collaborative process. Everyone gave it their all and the premise is great. And I, I had such good rapport with um, the actress that played my daughter and and it's crazy too to 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 play a dad <laughs> i i look like i'm i mean i could be a dad but i don't look i don't look it <laughs> i look like i'm early 20s or something or maybe even younger i don't know but i do play dad and the premise is that i get tricked into becoming the grim reaper and so part of my job is to help people pass to the other side, but anything I touches, anything I touch perishes. So then I have to cloak myself up so that I can't really touch my daughter, but I can't really explain what's, what has, what has happened to me. And so it's, the story is about, it's a father daughter story. And I'm, you know, I'm trying, I'm doing my best to get out of this situation, but at the same time, to try trying my best to to stay connected with my daughter because she can't really know what I'm what I'm doing and you know we're trying to make ends meet so we got no money and I'm just yeah it's a, it's a, it's a, it's it's a it's a crazy movie it's a crazy little movie and I I've really I have a really good feeling about it so um any idea when that might be coming out or start doing festivals yeah, so like we're so right now they're just uh, we just we just wrapped and then they're they're in post and they're trying to figure out how to the the, the best way possible to get into festivals. Right, right, right. Um, and you also mentioned. Uh, oh, actually, sorry, I also should have asked you. Do you know when um, War Assassins uh, fits full is going to be coming out as well? It's uh, it's slated to come out uh, December first of this year. Right. Right, right. And you also mentioned that you've been involved in another t a reboot of a TV series. 
Yeah, um, I haven't watched it, but I hear good things about it. It was called. It's called Leverage. I don't know if you've watched Leverage. I watched the original. Uh, yeah, there's Leverage. Yeah, there's, 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 they're, doing, they're doing a reboot, and uh, it comes out this Friday. And I believe I'm on episode nine. Right. I guessed on episode nine, and then uh, yeah, uh, Jonathan Frakes is uh, directing that episode, so it was fun to work with him. Oh wow! Wow, which yeah. channel? Which channel is it on? It's going to be on. You can watch it on Amazon through uh, the IMDb TV network. Ah, okay. Yeah. Yeah. Cool. Sounds as if I might actually be able to see it over here. Um, hey, hey, do it. Yeah, yeah. No, I, I was going to say, I really enjoyed the first, uh, the first uh, iteration of it. Do you have any other th uh, any theater coming up or plans? Uh, no theater plans, but I will put it into the universe that something will happen soon because I definitely miss it. And I feel like the the that i feel like that's where that's usually where i get the most growth i feel is doing theater right 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 uh, well we're nearly at the end of our of um our hour together um and i did want to ask you the luggage in the crypt questions um this concept of basically we're going to put you in the most magnificent pyramid and you are allowed to take things with you into the afterlife what film would you take with you Uh, what film would I take with? <sighs> this is a very hard one. Um, maybe I would. Maybe I'd take Hook. With Robin Williams. With Robin Williams. <laughs> I would take Hook. I I think because. You know what? I think that's probably the first movie where it. Um, I, I I was at a. I was at a, a sleepover. I was really young, and I remember watching Hook, with like all all of my friends were all gathered together watching watching it on a TV, and then, I I just kept watching the movie. But then like maybe like three quarters in, I look around and nobody is nobody's watching it anymore. Everyone's just out playing, doing whatever they're doing, and. I was just entranced by this movie. And I think that, that was, I think that was probably the first time where I was like, oh man, this is great. <laughs> <laughs> That's a great choice. What about a book? A book. Um, there's a book that I just read. Uh, it's called Boy Swallows Universe. I've not heard of this. By it's by this guy named Trent Dalton. Um I think that's my favorite book right now. It's like a coming of age story of um, um, of this little boy, and I I don't know. It just really did something to me. You should look it up. I will yeah, do. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Boy swallows universe. Boy swallows universe. What about um, an album? What sort of music do you listen to? Um, music. Man, <clears throat> I think I would take John Mayer with me. No, I'm not familiar with his work at all. What sort of work? <laughs> what sort of music is it? Um, he is. Uh, I I'd say just like uh, alternative rock. Um. Uh. Yeah, I feel I might, I, the first concert that I went to was a John Mary concert in San Diego. And um, yeah, I just know, I, I just like, I, I just like his storytelling. And then I feel like, I feel like I've seen, I, I've listened to like most of his albums growing up. And I feel like they sort of mirror like experiences that I've, uh, I've gone through too. Right. And, while getting older. Yeah. Right, right. Do you have a, do you have a favorite song of his? Um, oh man, that's hard. I don't think I, I think there's just so many good songs. Okay. I, I'd say just like, uh, I, I mean, I just like his first, well, it's not his first album, but his album Room for Squares is. Uh, Room for Squares, okay. <laughs> okay, cool. I'll check, I'll definitely check that one. What about um, a favorite food or drink? Favorite 
food. Um, I would take fried chicken with me. I love fried chicken. I don't think I could live without fried chicken. And um, a drink. Uh, just like a, like a simple vodka soda. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Sounds very, very clean and clean on the pat. Yeah. <laughs> Sounds very good. What about, what about a piece of visual art, a painting or a statue or something like that? Mm. And the top questions. Um, I don't know. I don't know. Um, uh, <laughs> a painting. You know what? I would take, I would take, so I, there, it, it would be like a painting that my mom, like something that my mom drew. Like my mom likes to draw like a, a bunch of small little sketches at home. And I think, I think any of those paintings I would just take with me. Yeah. That yes, yes, my mom. Um, I hear you there. My mother used to attend portrait classes, painting and oils. We're talking about the nineteen sixties, wow. um, when you know when I was a kid and so on. And one of the things that I got when she passed was a painting that she'd done of my grandmother. Um, so yeah, no, I, I I completely completely understand that. What about a luxury? Is there anything that you just can't imagine living without? Um, not really, not really. Luxury, nah. Man of simple tastes. <laughs> <laughs> which is fine, which is great, yeah. No, I, I understand that entirely. Lawrence, thank you so very much for spending your time with me today. Oh yeah, thank you, Nick, it was, it was great. It was a great conversation. My thanks again to Lawrence Cow. What a very talented young man he is. We're on hiatus now until July 29th when I'm talking with Chris Rowe, our producer. Join me then, and in the meantime, please remember to like and subscribe to the channel because it really does help spread the word. I look forward to you joining me on the July 29th, and in the meantime, stay safe and well. Thank you.